Hi guys! Today I'll be talking about the difference between saving, investing and speculating. I will also talk about how to choose shares to invest in. I'm sure you cannot wait, so let's get started. What is saving? Saving money is keeping it safe in a bank savings account for use in a short space of time. It is more suitable for short-term goals, for example, saving to pay for next year's school fees, saving for this year's December holidays, or saving to buy a car two years from now. Savings accounts are low risk and offer low growth, but that's okay. We are not looking for high growth when it comes to savings. We need a safety net and ease of access, as well as little or no chance of loss of our money. What is investing? Investing money is for the purposes of significantly growing it for use in the future. For example, you invest for your retirement, which is 30 years from now, investing for your toddler's future university fees, investing for financial freedom that you want to achieve 15 years from now. With investing, you are looking to get higher returns by taking on more risks. Example of investing includes buying stocks or shares, buying unit trusts, buying exchange traded funds, which are also known as ETFs, buying rental properties or setting up your own business or businesses. You need time, knowledge and discipline to invest. The investments can and they do fluctuate, meaning they go up and down, especially in short periods of time. But investing is chosen for the long-term growth potential. What is speculating? Speculating is looking for quick profits, gain from short-term price movements in a particular stock or share or investment. Do not confuse saving, investing and speculating. These three things are different and carry different risks. You should be clear about your financial goals and how much risk you can take considering how long it will take you to reach your goals. Saving is less risky than investing and investing is less risky than speculation. I spoke about setting goals in my previous videos so you can quickly go and check out what I said. Investing needs you to do homework and research before putting your money in stocks with a long-term goal. Speculating is trying to make quick profit by monitoring the short-term price movements of a particular investment. Speculating and investing are very different, and if you're an investor, avoid speculating. Here's an example of speculation and what could go wrong. A 59-year-old who wanted to retire at age 60 decided to try and make a quick buck to make his retirement more comfortable. He borrowed a large amount of money to invest in the hot and trendy stocks that everyone was talking about. Within 12 months, he had lost almost all his money. So these are the dangers of speculation. Without a long-term view, you are just looking and hoping for price movements to go within your favor within a short period of time. The odds are against you. So there are more odds that you lose your money rather than that you will gain your money. Investing needs research, a longer-term outlook, more time on your side, and you can safely invest in the markets because they do tend to go up over long periods of time. The next thing is how to decide which shares you should invest in. So someone once asked me, should I invest in pick and pay because it is only about 50 rand per share and that's very cheap, right? And I said to them, not so fast. You don't judge whether a share is cheap by simply looking at its share price. A share that is priced at 300 Rand, for example, could be cheaper than a share that is priced at 50 Rand, depending on the value and the quality of the business. For example, this is just an example, guys. A boiled chicken egg that costs 100 Rand would be too expensive, while a brand new iPhone 12 that costs 5,000 Rand 
would be dirt cheap. Get it? When you buy shares of companies, you are investing in real businesses. You are not investing in a green or red number on a graph or computer. This is very important to keep in mind. Before buying shares of a particular company, ask yourself if you would buy the entire company if you had enough money to do so. What things would you look at before you decide to buy that business? That's what we're going to discuss next. To choose stocks to invest in, you need to use basic accounting. So investors look at a company from a value perspective to judge if it is worth buying. The most important things to look at are the balance sheet, the income statement, and financial ratios. A company's balance sheet gives you a financial summary of the company using the following formula, assets minus liabilities equals net worth. By looking at a company's balance sheet, you can answer the following questions. What does the company own? Assets. What does the company owe? Liabilities. And what is the company's net worth or net equity? You compare a company's current balance sheet to times in the past. You do this so that you can see the company's progress, whether the company is growing its assets and or shrinking its debt and liabilities. Next is the income statement. To find out what a company's profit is, you check that company's income statement. The income statement reports sales minus expenses and gives you net profit or net earnings. You don't simply look at current earnings in isolation. Again, you always have to compare current earnings to earnings in the past so that you can see if there's been progress, so that you can see whether the company has been increasing profit over the years. Profit is like oxygen to a company. If a company is not making any profits, then it means it is slowly dying and you need to look at another company. Next, we have financial ratios. These ratios are numerical tools that you can use to find out the relationship between two or more numbers found in the company's financial data. Websites such as MoneyWeb, ShareData, Investing.com, Yahoo Finance can give you the most recent balance sheets, income statements, and financial ratios of most public companies. We'll discuss a few in the following slides. One important financial ratio is earnings per share, abbreviated EPS. EPS is calculated by dividing the company's net income with its total number of outstanding shares. Don't worry, you wouldn't have to do this calculation yourself because the websites that I mentioned in the previous slide give these numbers already. It is a tool used to judge the profitability of a company. It's better to invest in a company with the higher and growing EPS as it means the company is generating greater profits every time. So before investing in any company, you should always check past EPS for the last five years or so and check if it is growing. And if it's growing, it's a good sign. And if the EPS is falling, stagnant or not stable, then perhaps you should look at another company. Then we have the price to earnings ratio or the P.E. ratio. A P.E. ratio helps to assess the value of a company. Generally, a low P.E. ratio is preferred when choosing stocks. The definition of low differs from industry to industry. Different industries have different P.E. ratios for the companies in their industry, also known as industry P.E. It makes sense to use the P.E. ratio to compare companies in the same industry, choosing one with the lower P.E. If a company has a lower P.E., you get more earnings for your investment. This makes a low P.E. stock good value, but a P.E. that is too low can also mean that the value of that company is questionable. Lastly, I'll talk about the debt to equity ratio or the DE ratio. This measures the relationship between the amount of capital that has been borrowed and the amount of capital contributed by shareholders. Generally, as a company's DE ratio increases, it becomes riskier 
as it means that the company is using more debt and has a weaker equity position. In general, companies with a DE ratio of more than one are high risk and should be considered very carefully before investing. High DE ratio equals aggressive use of debt equals high risk. Low DE ratio equals less use of debt equals less risky. I'll end it here for today with the ratios. These aren't all of them, but I consider these to be the most important to consider. That's it for today's episode. If you want to start investing, but you have no clue where to start, you can contact me to buy my ebook. I have left my contact details in the comments below and the ebook can be emailed or sent to you via WhatsApp. In my next video, I will talk about passive investing. This is investing your money in a way that does not need you to read and interpret financial statements or balance sheets or financial ratios. Big sigh of relief, right? If you do not want to miss out, subscribe, subscribe, subscribe to get a notification when I post the next video. See you then. Bye guys.